Hello guys and welcome back to Trek Yards. He is the amazing awesome Commander Cockings. I am. You're stargazing. Ah! Yes, he's Captain Foley and today we're looking at the brand new hero ship. Unless it never comes back. That seems unlikely. We don't know yet, but at least for this episode, very much the hero ship. Starfleet Stuart is back. Bold. Blue Grills, etc. And we're going to do a full breakdown now. We looked at the brief trailer teaser bit. So Stuart, what do you think seeing the show for the first time and now staring at it, which is always different to like the momentum on the screen? I really liked it. I'm glad we got a new Stargazer for sure. I'm not a big fan of foreign assailed ships, honestly. You know, you know for a fact I'm not a huge fan of the Prometheus or the Stargazer. I love them, so. <laughs> I, know, I know you do. I know you do. I'm a big fan of three nasal ships, which, which are, a lot of people are. It's like one. So. It's like one cannon. <laughs> Which is not my favorite. I'm not a huge fan of the Galaxy X. There's there's more than one. There's the Niagara class that was in the Battle of Wolf 359. There's it, it definitely has design cues from like the Sovereign and stuff, which I like. And when we first saw it, I thought, mm, all of those colors look very Star Trek Online. Well, guess what? Now there's Star Trek Online ships, so why not? I don't have a problem with the coloring for Star Trek Online ships. So I really like this ship. And uh, really a fan of the new cell design and stuff. So how about you? What did you think when you first saw it? I actually disagree that it has sovereign elements. I think they've actively avoided sovereign elements because John Eves has put a lot of sovereign in Discovery Era, in Stranger Worlds, all the eras that shouldn't have them, and it's all kind of felt the same. This does not feel like a John Eves design to me. It does not have sovereign elements. You don't see those big secondary lines of a sovereign. You don't see, I'm very thankful because we have too many of those John Eves tropes that are just now everywhere, which dilutes them heavily. I, I agree somewhat, but the, the saucer has a very sovereign vibe to it for me um the rest of it not so much but mm. but what i think is true yes i i liked it it was a ship that we saw the, the the brief glimpse of and it was very much a oh this is textured like a discovery of a ship which is fair for only given the little box you know and then the cells from the dimension we saw looked broad and and thick with a discovery era vibe this however the more you see of it in the show and they are not afraid of showing us the ship Unlike other current treks, except the, the animated, they kind of like avoid space shots. But in this one, we, we kept getting cut back to space shots, and it's refreshing. It's like, oh yeah, we get a real sense of it. No direct like front shot, but I mean like a beauty front shot, but we'll come to that later. But no, I liked it. The more you see, the more you like. They, they sort of skim across the hull in a way that you see the detail, and you're like, oh no, this thing actually is detailed correctly for a ship in the Star Trek universe in post-TNG. They have the correct blinkies for the first time in a long time, the red and green, which is missing. You, you feel a certain detail in the cells that feels a, a, like real rather than discovering a cell or something like that. You know, you pan by it and it's not like greebly to all hell, but there are things that need to be there that are there. Like phaser strips and transporter emitters. Things are literally essential for the operation of a ship and a ship like the Gen Hay missed all of them. Literally every single one, it was, it, you know, the list of Jonah Hayes, what doesn't have is bigger than what it does have. This feels like an actually functioning full spaceship in the Star Trek universe. Thank goodness. I gotta say, I really appreciate the fact, too, that there's also um, impulse uh, control crystals. That dome style, which is reminiscent of the original Stargazer, because it had those, and it was of that era. So it's kind of a nice step to include those on this later design. Um, they look really nice. It's a nice detail. I always loved the way those looked. So yeah, I'm, I'm neither here nor there on those because that's a that's an antiquated design styling. But I'm assuming they link to a new like, well, we're going to supercharge them. We need the old style to kind of, you know, yeah, uh, it's fine. They they work. Just oh, that's from uh, 80 years ago. Not a huge deal. I am actually quite impressed by the the warp nacelle design because clearly it's we tried a thing, which is two sets of coils, but they have line of sight. They have a sense of both eras in terms of they have the sleek forward of the of the es with the point but not actually a point so it feels unique yet the more compressed vibe of the refit which is a iteration on the tos it feels like maybe we sleeked it down rather than getting sharper we got thinner but not too thin and we doubled up on the on the on the grills to reference you know the enterprise d star on the back and the more voyager on the front or etc so I, I liked the it's actually a new design that for me works and i think aesthetically it blends well it looks nice, and thank F we have blinkies. Because again, they keep ignoring them. Yeah. It would have been an easy route just to slap on Sovereign nacelles and just. Or Gen Hay. Yeah. Um, so I'm really appreciative for the nacelles. I do like the design as well. That step back and do a smaller um, a part at the back looks really great. 
It feels functional. Like there's actually a reason for it. So yeah, that's one of the best design elements from this one, obviously, and one of the most unique and original. So, and yes. unlike the Gen Hei, which just felt like very, very razor thin, sharp e nacelles, it was like, eh, they're okay. These have a personality of their own. That feels like we're not just continually getting sharper and more sleek. These aren't as sleek, but they feel more real to me. They feel designed rather than sketched by John as a quick, let's make an E sharper. And these are not digs on John particularly, it's just if you think if it, his style gets more advanced, it gets thinner and sharper, but that's not how all tech would go. You look at a cell variation in the TNG Voyager, they're all different. This is different. It's nice. So that's the first view. The next view is a collage of, of the views. We get a really unique front view. And we'll look, we have, we will have looked at this in another video, that, that front view. But I loved cutting to that because as a CG artist, I'm thinking that big, wide, open shot we first see him is very real of a cinematic, like, okay, they're all distanced. But as soon as you have a perspective shot, you change the focal length to be more zoomed in. That's just how, that's a thing I would do. And so you have to bring the ships closer in. So you get a beautiful, like, front perspective of all the ships in a very clear, crisp, close-up way. That That's exactly what I would do thematically. And so you get really, really nice uh, front view. So yeah, here's, here's three views, Stuart. Any different thoughts, nice seeing it in more depth? No, I'm, I was just really appreciative we got all these different views of it because the front view is very, very nice looking. It's got a nice stance to it. It does, yeah. Um, as you kind of said, it it doesn't feel John Eves, but it totally feels John Eves. Um, if you showed me this ship, I would say, yep, John Eves designed that next. Because <laughs> I find a lot of his design elements, especially lately, have the same kind of details. This one does as well. It ties in. I can, can definitely see the John influence, but it's different enough that I really appreciate the fact that they kind of stepped outside the box, but it looks good from the front for sure. Whereas I would say this is definitely not a Johnny's design, as in fully. And we know it was actually a large collaboration, but collaboration of, of, of people really get it because John Eves helped design it. He did original base sketches. Thomas Moroni helped design it with John. Doug Drexler then took the design from Thomas and John and he finished it and then et cetera, et cetera. So there's a huge line of people, but unlike Discovery, where there's a line of people that clearly don't understand Trek in the, in the abstract way of living it, all those three people I trust very strongly, and this is the result. If, you know, like even in a cell length, they they feel long in the bottom shot, but they don't feel long in every other shot. They feel in proportion. It, the whole ship is in bloody proportion. We'd rarely get that with Montrek. And a, f a friend of mine that I go to Wonderfest with, Bill Kraus, also helped with this production. Not sure if he had any design input on this, but I think he a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I think so. He, I think he designed. Well, he did. He built the models that are the little stargazer models that are in the ready room, which is really cool to know that a friend of mine's working on this. So I love that. Um, and he's been on our show once before, and we've talked about a few of his designs as well. So yeah, it's great to think how many people modeled this. Because if Thomas built a model and then. Doug took it, and then the actual production people made a model, then Kraus made a model, and then Stoll make a model. It's good. And what I like about the front view as well is that A, super in proportion, feels very TNG, no, no, no whatever, but the bridge window, which we now know is not a bridge window, you can see, you would absolutely see the bridge inside. It's bright enough. If you can see a window, you could see a bridge. So that is a, there's a thing there, but it's not a bridge window. We know it's a bridge view screen, but there's a space there. Well, so, we know They're not. very careful not to call it a view screen. They call it a viewer. That that that's the term's been thrown around quite a bit. So I'm, I'm I feel confident saying it's not a view screen per se, but it is a viewer. So, so you mean like not as advanced as the as the three D view screen of TNG, but not quite as I don't know. But I'm just saying you would have you would see inside it and you can't, and that's a very clear shot of the front, and you cannot see the bridge, and you would see the bridge. So now, a lot of people had some complaints about the back looking too. Do you like a dog's breakfast? Just strings thrown in too much. But I refer them back to the original Stargazer. The Stargazer at the back was chunky and greebly. That was kind of the design idea. There was a lot of model parts thrown on there, even some Valkyrie stuff from anime and stuff. Well, so it was, it was a little brick with the connectors and two impulse engines slapped on. It was very rough and rudimentary. I mean, I have no problem. What I liked about it a lot is that when they when the, the shuttle brings Picard in. It goes into the bay. A, the door's closed. B, it's not. It's not a huge shuttle bay, which means the shuttle, the ship is not huge, which means they've they've actively kept the scale super in proportion. Definitely, maybe not. Well, the nacelles are still quite long, but Sovereign is still a bigger, longer ship. I mean, this I think compared would still feel like okay, diminutive, fantastic, brilliant. But as you go by, you see these big 
shuttle bay uh, viewer windows with you, know, you can see at the, at the bottom there that top four you know big rooms of people and then look down the shuttles. You can really you can really get a sense of scale based on these larger rooms. And as it, as the camera go by, you say, oh, that's this room, that's this room. It's all very relatable. It isn't this massive ginormous thing without concept. But Stuart. Those eagle-eyed people noticed that briefly, quickly, ever so quickly in the ready room, they showed and they released. And now I've got more. <laughs> Take a look at this picture, Stuart. This is the uh, finished approved version, I believe, is how they framed it. So a much clearer view of the Stargazer from the front. Now, obviously not finished finished because they've not got the, the first ring of warp uh, grills on, but a very clear view of the design. And there's three of these, so get ready to talk about it. Love it. And see, this is where I say that the sovereign look comes in. Because look at this, the shape of that saucer. It, it just feels sovereign -y. I don't know in the show if it's more rounded and less oval. But Can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's why I say that. Because a lot of the details, especially on the front of it as well, look very sovereign -y. But that is also just the era, potentially. Yeah, I, I know. I know. But that's like the design language. At least they follow the. Yeah, and I don't think it would look good with a with a with a pure circle. I think a, a slight oval and a really gentle oval as well. It's got a little bit of pushing forward. No, I think it's nice. And in phaser trips, very important. You can see very limited transporter beam emitters, but they are there and they're big and and this isn't a, this isn't a huge ship. I mean, there's window scaling. Obviously, this is the concept art, so it probably changed a bit. Not a huge ship. I mean, the source is pretty pretty flat. Each of those isn't a deck, so it's not as if. Each represents, you know, nine decks. I mean, we know how many decks we've seen in MSD from the side. But it doesn't feel huge. I love that. Really grounds it. The detailing on the top between the two struts is interesting. It's very reminiscent of something. It feels it feels anime in its design almost, actually. I like the fact that it does feel anime because it's got that anime lineage. Because the original one had some anime parts from Rick, Rick Sternbach. I can't I can't picture what I'm visual what, what I'm thinking of when I see that center part, but it's something in my mind is like it's very recognizable. But it looks good. It looks good. Tell Stuart in the comments down below. He'll yes, appreciate. Please it. do. Please do. Yeah, you know, when I look at this, I I like the multi shape connective tissue. You've got the very distinct saucer thrown in with a curved curved pointy second bit, which feels like other stars of the era. On top of that, you've got a more structured area with a very classical bulky, not too bulky pylons. I like those multi shapes. It isn't one or the other or the other. It's kind of fluid. You know, having that hard edge at the back allows for shuttle bay and easy uh, details. And also, I, I like the the way the nacelles plug in. That says to me, click new nacelles. If this thing is a is a is a is a continuation of the Stargazer legacy, that's deep space exploration science, at least for its era. So if it can throw out its cells, pluck on new ones, they can keep up with the advancement of modern uh, nacelle tech because it feels very plug and play there, and I really like that. Like just a, a pod they add. I can't tell from these few pictures, but the bottom connection points are completely different than the top connection points. It's not just took the top design and flipped, stuck it to the bottom. Mm, oh, yeah, there's, we'll go back a bit. There's different and, yeah. shapes there, and I like that because they could have easily cheaped out and just... So the next view, though, is a back. Um, the registry, I don't think, was white, glowing white. I can't say I like the... That was the last picture, but I mean... This it is... wasn't glowing white, but it was white on the back when we did that pan over. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, they, they, yeah, they moved the... Whatever. Yeah, this just feels flowing. And the nacelles are long, but the way they're placed works. It's a really nice ship. And apparently Eagle Moss has announced an XL version of this already. Because you would like to think, unlike the other shows, when this is two years in production, meaning Picard season two was further pre-production, that means that for Stowe and for Eagle Moss, there isn't going to be a full year delay in getting this thing out. Because they would have finished it, you'd think, you'd think way earlier than the other shows where like the Gen Hay was built, you know, the week it came out. So that thing wasn't going to come out for a year. So it'd be nice to see this thing come out, especially in Star Trek Online, who helped design it, in the next couple of months, or even before the show finishes. Because this would certainly uh, hit some news while I was... I will say this view and the last view, I'm so thankful the second set of warp grills because it wouldn't have worked so well with the first with only one set. They feel lackluster. <clears throat> I do. I mean, it looks like here they were going for two different styles. The first the, uh, uh, forward section of the nacelle being kind of reminiscent of the refit era with the black chiller grills and then the back being oh, more yeah. modern. But then, then they just decided, hell, 
we'll just make the them all glow, which is fine too. So even the back feels reminiscent of, of certain things. But the next view though is a very beauty shot. This looks almost exactly like a shepherd class to me. But that's because you're hiding a lot of the unique features. So this certainly is shepherd class, but it's because it's just saucer with very specific angled nacelles that are thin. They're all going to feel similar when you do that sort of style. So I'm not going to take anything away from it for that, but definitely Walker vibes in this. Yeah, and there you got that cut out at the front of the bridge, which could be a window, and then it wasn't it's not. a window. So, yeah, which is good good, good to point out, yeah. Now, in this concept, you can see, yes, I got RCS thrusters and phaser strips with the correct uh, lineage. There's not many weapons, which I quite like. There's no forward phaser. That's interesting. And there's there's some of, them, some of the pylons and some on the side. I mean, that's, that is a sense of exploration. If they're just going for, we're not going to have forward phases. It's like, R really? You don't want forward phases? Okay. Well, each of those phaser rings can fire forward. So, just Ooh, saying. Yeah, that's still a... Yeah. It's in the phaser arc. Those, at the end, they can go forward still. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I trust that. I'm, I'm thoroughly interested where the... Oh, wait, are the torpedo launchers between the engines? Is that just a... I think I do see a very refit style torpedo platform, even that top raised detail. is you know, not very high detail here. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that must, that must be the torpedoes. It's an interesting area behind the bridge there. It almost feels like a shuttle-based staging area. It, it feels like a kind of a launch bay of sorts, but I, I don't think it is. But it's a nice detail. Yeah, it's nice not to have it all connected, having that up and down. Because that... This also feels very reliant-y, having that raised. Like, it, 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 like, we know the production design liked the, the movie era a lot, and you're definitely getting those hearkening elements back. But it, but it doesn't feel overcomplicated, you know? It doesn't feel too simple. I mean, these are the concept ones, but this, this does feel like an appropriate ship. I mean, it, it is not rocket science. But briefly, though, the next little picture still we actually have in this folder, I'll, I'll run through briefly, is the is a pan over, because we know the whole thing. And I'll just go over that slowly in the edit, and you can see the, the even enhanced, you know, plate detail, both texturing and physical. It's not too much, but it's all right. A lot of interactive lighting. Possibly too much, because what are they spotlighting? Nothing, most of these lights. But that's okay. Well, that, just talking about that rear area behind the bridge it does look like there are launch bays there that go down um almost like the on um, deep space nine um and there's also airlocks by the looks of it so it does look like an area for yeah there's red there's yellow caution tape for a reason and those are spotlights that you think as it would go down they would then go and then go up i don't think it's big enough for a runabout but if they had a dedicated runabout launch, like a new runabout, that would be an impressive little... I mean, so, hey, hell of a pilot to launch from the middle of pontoons and... Oy. But there is, a, there is a separate, you know, uh, shuttle bay lo looking platform there. So there's definitely... Definitely something. And I mean, hey, if this is a hero ship, there'll be, you know, be in lots of episodes, then that will, I'm sure, come into play and, and, and you know, it's all designed for a reason. So as we keep going over, we can see a beautiful Stargazer back piece with a really, really, really nice back shuttle bay launch, big open door, uh, open window with in fact like four small doors and like a little standing room behind it, which I'm, I'm intrigued about. Reminds me of the NX-01s sort of under or, or back part. Uh, I mean, spacesuits, landing, if this, well, I don't think it can land, but if it could land, that's a good area. Because I really appreciated the fact that the, the shuttle bay door was closed and on the open for the shuttle, like not even all the way. <laughs> Um, yeah, but. yeah, very interesting. I don't think I like how many random orange orange lights there are, because why? Looks cool. Oh, Looks one, okay. one detail. Yeah, one detail I didn't point out the from the pan over too. Uh, there's a nice red um, ring around the saucer. You can just kind of see it in the first shot where it's like, and it extends all the way around, which is nice. It's, that's another hark uh, callback to the refit era where they had red pinstriping around the registry and you know the refit was supposed to have red striping like in more places that they just didn't do I, I like it it's a good look and i've seen it on many ships over the years um, different like for starfleet battles and stuff yeah i don't see any escape pods though they would have been nice to have some escape pod doors but i think neither here nor there oh and i love it as you as you get that almost last pan you can actually see the warp coils, the iterative tube vibe at the, at the back of the, the cells. It isn't just a flat line. It isn't just a... Whoever built this knows air coils. It's very specific what they are, and you can see them as depth. 
Good. Gonna get close to see that, but you can. So yeah, that's the uh, our first full sort of look at the new Stargazer. I'm sure we'll get lots to come, unless it's never coming back. In which case, they just want to impress us all for a quick, a quick hurrah. But we know it's coming back, Stuart. We we know, we know. As in, we don't actually know, but we know. If that makes sense. Well, here's hoping. I hope they didn't like try to trick us in the first episode. Say, look at all this cool stuff. The rest of the season is not like that at all. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, very cool shit. Anyway, on that note, guys, comment down below what you thought about the design. What stood out to you? What didn't? What you're missing, what you liked, what you didn't like. All those things are important. Um, we also do lives where we talk about this kind of stuff in person with you guys. So if you can make it to those, please do. And a good way to do that is hit subscribe and notify so you don't miss those notifications. Um, and don't forget to like this video before you leave because thumbs up is important. Mm -hmm. And of course, support us directly with Super Chats during the lives. We love to see, have, and talk about and talk to you guys in those lives. Or Patreon, PayPal, join the channel on YouTube, all great ways. Or just the free ways, as you said, liking, etc. Because they do help the algorithms and do a lot of this free content for you guys. So support us if you can and we'll keep making cool stuff for you. Um, so until next time. <laughs> I'm just going to say I'm Captain Foley because I didn't um, get an introduction. Come on, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.